Hey guys, Todd here with Great Escape Farms. Uh, quick update out here on the farm. I just wanted to go over a couple things I got into this weekend. First, the propagation beds here. You can see some of the plants are, are wilting a little, so they've got enough growth on them and not enough uh, roots to keep them up, and I don't have my mist system set up here yet. So these are my winter cuttings, my hardwood cuttings. So I did some trimming on them. I, I should have done a little before and after. You can see a spot right here where there's a fresh trim there's a couple of them some of these were flowering out and also had some grapes that were flowering and uh, producing grapes from cuttings even so i went ahead and i trimmed those off to let it put some energy into the roots i went ahead and watered it and i'll have to ask my father-in-law to come over and water it a couple times a week for me just keep these alive until i get the mist system set up so yesterday was the first day that we had approaching 90 degrees and it definitely showed it in the propagation bed here moving over to the water harvesting system you can see I went and got some black plastic many people had commented on my videos that I'm gonna have some issues with growing algae in these so I got some black plastic I covered it up this is probably gonna have to suffice to next year until uh, winter when I can actually pull these out and paint them so I think what I'm gonna do is a recommendation from one person was to sand it another person recommended to paint it black and another person said don't go black go white because the black will heat it up too much so what I'll probably do is a com I will probably do all three of those I'll probably go and uh, sand it paint it black and then paint over it as white one thing my father and I, father-in-law and I noticed is that we can't tell what the water level is anymore. And I've been using this a good bit this week, weekend. So my overflow system right here has water up to the level that the water of the tanks are, uh, just by the nature of the way it works. So when the tank is too full, it overflows and drains and it goes out here into what will eventually be a swale out that way. So I found online that they actually have clear PVC pipe. So on this section right here, I will put a uh, clear PVC pipe so I can see what the level is. Two inch PVC pipe, don't know what it will cost, probably be a little expensive, but uh, this is a business I'm running here, so it's it's worth the investment and what I will do because it will also get algae growing in it is I will have uh, Threads on the bottom and the top. I'll get some threaded connections just so I can see the middle section see what the water level is and With the threads on there. I can shut all the valves off and remove the clear section and clean it uh, Because it would be a straight piece at that point and it would just be like a little wire brush Let's see, also this weekend I put in about, uh, I'd say about three dozen plants in here this this weekend. Uh, let me see, I'll put some back in there. Here's one right here. So you can see right there, that is a Hansen's bush cherry or a sand cherry. I had quite a few of those to put in. I ordered those in bulk and I uh, put some leaves, dug it in, put some leaves around it, watered it, and hopefully it will take off. So. I have many, many, many plants in here now. One of the next things I'm gonna do when I come back is do an inventory, figure out what I've lost and what I have in here. Uh, my map is a little out of date now. One thing I have done uh, lately is you can see right there, all of the plants that I'm aware of that are alive are labeled. And actually right behind it, let me stick my finger out a little further, this one right here with the white tag at the bottom, you can see it hasn't leafed, oh, I'm sorry. I was about to say that one's dead, but if you look a little closer, there's a bud right there, and there's a bud down at the bottom. So that is a jujube. It's a Lee jujube, and it actually did survive. I didn't think it did. So very late coming out. So I, that's why I haven't pulled any of these out just yet, is some of these plants are very late coming out. And I, I had actually given up on that one, but it's just budding out now. Back in, let's see, we are mid-June right now. Back in May, there was nothing there. So always give your plants a chance. They may come out just a little later than usual. I did some work in the back there and I'm gonna go ahead and pause right now and go around the backside and show you what I did there because I've had some wash away issues. Okay guys, I am in the upper part of the food forest and I've had a wash away issue right in here. Uh, I have a, a mound on the top that I was planting on and the water kind of flows in like this and hits that mound and runs down. 
And I've had a wash away issue where I actually pick up all the leaves and wash it down with it, even though there are like a foot or so of leaves. So one, one thing I noticed, I had these logs right here going this way and it held the leaves and on the downside, all the leaves were gone. So what I was, initially I had planned on putting uh, little mini swales in here, if you will, or make this a swale, but I have too much of an angle going down. So what I did was I dammed up just to slow the water down uh, every so often here. So what, right here, I'm about eight foot, about six foot there. I'm only about three foot there, about three foot there. And you'll notice there's a big pile in the back. I'll get as close as I can here. And uh, there's tractor tire and some other junk in here. I had to stop. I, I was in here working on this dam and I didn't quite complete it the way I wanted. And I started noticing yellow jackets. And once we got up to three or four yellow jackets flying around this one area, I decided it was time for me to bail. Uh, I'm not a big fan of yellow jackets. I've had quite a few instances where I've been stung many, many times because I got wrapped up in one of their nests. And so somewhere in this mess, there's a yellow jackets nest and uh, I'm headed out today. I don't have time to deal with it. I don't want to be uh, swelling up in a car riding home today. So I'll deal with that another time, try to figure out where that nest is and get rid of them. But uh, what I did is this, this is about half of my wash away issue here. I still have some more further down. So I do need to add some more wood in there and I'll play with that uh, next time I come out or I'll be up for a good while over J the July 4th weekend. So I might be able to do something then. Okay, quick update on the garden here. Everything is doing pretty good. I did, came out and did a little bit of weeding earlier uh, not earlier today but yesterday and everything is surviving doing well the sheet mulch is doing good everything's nice and moist underneath the only issues i have let me zoom in here and those aren't even too bad are the strawberries uh those aren't too bad let me find some over here i think and actually even as i look at these these aren't too bad looking but uh right there those aren't the greatest look. So the strawberries just don't seem to be doing as well as everything else, but everything else seems to be thriving in here. Uh, lost, uh, lost a couple of annuals, but I'm not too worried about that as long as the perennials are doing well. So the garden area in the sheet mulched uh, bedding is doing great. And I, I, like I say, I spent about a half hour or so doing some weeding, mostly in the back around the uh, the tarp back there where stuff was growing up along the side. Okay, and now we're behind my father-in-law's place. We went ahead and also covered it up again with just black plastic. Also, you'll notice there's a hose up on top here. We went ahead and we hooked that up. What we do is we hook that black hose out of the nozzle right there into a pump. That's the input side. This Y connector right here is the output side and the bottom one right here where my thumb is that one feeds to whatever he is watering and you'll notice its valve is wide open and this one is about three quarters closed and what that does is it just feeds it right back into the pump and what that allows us to do is to have water constantly moving in the pump even when he's not watering that way I don't have to worry about cavitation in the pump or any other issues that we could have the other issue we had here was we were leaking around the bottom. If you remember, we had black tape there and everything. So I went in and ordered another first flush system and cut right here, put a joint in, uh, another length of pipe here, and then I put another bottom piece on. So uh, the only thing I needed was this one connector right here and I double glued it and we put some water in it and tested it out and everything worked fine. The other project for this week, weekend, was right there. And my father-in-law is putting in a garden and this, we have the door up and screened and then we have cattle panels across the top there. And we will screen both sides and then the back side so it will be completely enclosed and that will be a deer-proof garden. We have a severe deer problem out here, so. In the next week or two, we'll actually do a sheet mulch system for him, kind of similar to what I did in my garden area, 
And then, uh, let me see if I can stabilize this a little. Uh, sheet mulch in the bottom, and then we'll just plant into it. Uh, I have some grapevines and other things that he wants to grow in there. And he wants them to grow some tomatoes and okra and stuff like that, so just some annuals. So that should definitely keep the deer out. And then we'll put some small wire cloth on the bottom to keep the rabbits out. So been a busy weekend out here.